told anyone my convert story. It's been such a long time. Well, Shall I'm sure I? this could be the I'll, last one. I'll, I'll cook up can, a nice one. I'm about 38 years old. I was born in a Hindu Brahmin family. Um, born in England, uh, raised up between England and India. Uh, I embraced Islam about 23 years ago. Uh, I was 15 at the time, 15, 16. My uncle had died uh, in very tragic circumstances around about the age of 15. And uh, in the Hindu tradition, the eldest son has to perform the final funeral rites. Um, and so he only had three daughters. I was the, uh, the son of his uh, elder brother, and I counted as his sort of eldest son. He was very close to him. So I ended up going to Banaras, which is a place in, in India, sometimes pronounced as Banaras, which is a place where they perform the, the final rites, and where usually the body is taken, burnt, and turned into ashes, and, and flown into, flowed into the Ganges. So I went there um, and I had to do a series of rites for my uncle um, and uh, at the final point I even you know, saw the ashes of his body and I saw this along the ghat, along the, um, the area where a lot of bodies are being burnt regularly and they turned into ashes and they literally flowed into the water. It kind of struck me that life is, at least the way we think of it, is very impermanent. And the whole idea of death as being so close was something that really, really struck me. Um, and so from the age of about 15, I started looking into what death means in other traditions and the afterlife. And being a Hindu, I looked into my own tradition first and you know, um, the whole idea of uh, rebirth and karma and so on was something that I was looking into. And then uh, I started looking into other religions, Judaism, Christianity, um, and one of the things that I always held on to was that there's lots of different paths. All these religions are fine as long as anyone takes a religion and they're all reaching to God at the end. Until I came across Islam and I wasn't, Islam was probably the last possible religion I would have been looking at. Um, partly because in those days, now it's probably 10 times worse, but in those days, they had a bit of bad publicity and uh, I remember reading a couple of Reader's Digest articles which was the kind of the book that often used to have a uh, few things about real life events and they'd have, they'd have these real life stories and they'd often have a, a bad story of somebody being forced to wear the hijab or anyway cut a long story short um, when I started looking at Islam what struck me was it didn't appear what it should have appeared to be so it wasn't, uh, you know, an Arabian religion 14 centuries ago, one of many other religions. So there's, you know, there's Hinduism, that wonderful combination of different faiths and, you know, from the Indian subcontinent, different ways of thinking, because the term Hindu itself is kind of a catch term for lots of different ways of looking at things within the Indian subcontinent. And then you had Judaism, which is kind of the people of Judea, the, the people of Israel, the tribe, and so on. And uh, Christianity gen generally centering on the person of Christ and what happened and, you know, the idea of his redemptive sacrifice. But Islam was kind of giving a more broader message. Um, for starters, the Prophet Muhammad, uh, who's, at least to my mind, seemed the founder of Islam, is not mentioned in the Quran apart from three times. And the Quran's got a whole chapter on Mary. Well, she's not Arab, technically, in my mind. And then there's Abraham popping up, and Noah popping up, and Jesus popping up. And what's that got to do with, you know, Arabia at that time? And then a different narrative started emerging. So the first narrative I had was there's lots of different parts, everyone's going to God. And then a different narrative emerged, which is God is one. And the essence of his path of submitting to that oneness is one. And he has been sending different, uh, different messengers to each and every nation from the beginning of time until now. And that was, Adam was the first. And that religion for all intents and purposes in Arabic could be called Islam, or that way could be called Islam. But that is the one path, that is the path of God. And it's broad enough to accommodate these various things. And when I struck that, it was kind of, whoa, now this is a challenge, 
because I could s sit back in my comfort zone and say there's lots of different ways and we're all one big happy family and all you need is love du -du 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 -du, and all of that stuff and you know uh, Bob Marley's one love one life and all that stuff but then I've got this message saying this is it this is the truth and this is just the final embodiment but that truth has been coming from the beginning of time and it will keep coming because that truth is the message of the cosmos that truth is the message of, that's being shown to you over and over and again and so then it was a bit of a thing that doesn't fit the islam that i'm reading in readers digest or you know today they could just say the islam that you see on television or the islam that you know is constantly being bombarded it's it's a deeper islam it's the islam of of the soul it's the islam that you know, at some point, it's like, you know, I think I know this. And so that process, initially, it was a kind of a, you know, how do I debate with this? And I had a couple of friends at school who started, um, started to get more into their practice of Islam. And uh, so I used to often debate with them women's rights and, you know, violence in Islam and all my little things. And... I was quite good with words, so I found that I would win the arguments, but when I left them and I went home, I would lose the debate. Because at some point, I knew that I was winning with points, but there's a deeper level of conviction that had started to rise in my heart about what's being said. And so the, the whole process just kept going on and going, and uh, I feel looking back now, God sort of created a conflation of events that were happening at that time. And I was being exposed to Islam and different, you know, people close to me. So my school teacher, one of, she actually embraced Islam. And it was just my life changed after that. But, you know, later on I heard that, you know, there's a, that whom, whomsoever Allah wills to guide, that he, you know, he, yashrah, he gives them expansion. He expands his chest, lil Islam. For, he expands his chest for God. And sometimes there's a term, I think it's called yuqallib, to literally turn a person. And that was my sensation. I literally felt I was turned and I was span and it was like this sense of expansion. So, yeah. And then what was really interesting is the next day when I told people and I wanted to become Muslim and I said what I did, the way you become Muslim, it was just a coming home. It's like, oh, this is, this is me. This is a part of me. This is what I've always done known somehow, somewhere, I should be doing. Well, during that seven-month period, I think the, f the first part of it was sort of just opening up to, because it wasn't conscious. I don't think looking back, I could say that I was, you know, deliberately thinking about something. It was just subconsciously, or at that time, I was realizing that I'm starting to believe. Um, and then I think the biggest reason why there was a delay, which in hindsight, I, I think was partly because I just didn't think it was possible. I didn't think someone born in a Hindu Brahmin family could actually become Muslim. It didn't seem possible to me. It was not something I could have entertained because I didn't actually, um, I don't think I knew of any converts from Hinduism. So I couldn't imagine someone from Hinduism could become Muslim and at least not in the background that I had. So it was a very relaxed uh, you know, not very, not very strong, you know, Hindu type, but as is common to many, uh, at least that kind of Hindu up, upper class Brahmin sort of environment, was it's, it's sort of like a very relaxed identity, uh, shrouded on, you know, like festivals and, you know, just tight knit family, very close, you know, well off, not many problems. And then, you know, why would you do that? Why, why, why would I convert? It was, it was not something, it never came to me. And then even as the faith was emerging, it was sort of like, yeah, but, you know, that's, it's kind of like growing as a seed. It sprouted. And when it was, I believe this. Now, what does that entail? And when that thing happened, then it was always like, this is a bridge. And can I ever cross it? Can I ever actually take that step? I mean, you know, what would my family say? What would anyone say? Um, and then I think what finally pushed it over was that you know God actually created an environment around me where I saw other people convert, and someone who I really looked up to, um, who had converted a year or two before, and his life had literally changed. 
I was walking with him and he literally looked at me and he said, you don't know how long you're going to live. You don't know how much time you've got. And he said, don't you want to live your life or at least profess, say what it is that you believe in to yourself. There were a lot of challenges that came afterwards that, you know, had I so sat and thought about it, it probably would have prolonged it a lot more than seven months. But the fact that I took that step, from that point onwards, I found there is no way that um, God's support does not, does not come. God's support in the most amazing ways. I think for a lot of converts, the real, real proof becomes their post-conversion stories, especially when there's so much family pressure against them. You think there's no way, just when you think it's all, I've got no way out, there's some you know, support coming, the most amazing ways. Post-conversion in the beginning, I mean, the, uh, my family obviously had a hard time with it. I was 16-year-old. They, they, they could not understand why I would do something like that, and it took them a while to actually think there was a genuineness involved and there wasn't a lady somewhere <laughs> or some kind of drug you know, fueled project behind my reason for becoming Muslim. But it, to cut a long story short, um, there were a lot of trials, there were, there were tribulations, but I, you know, I, I did go find, I went, ended up going from England to India where my parents were residing. I was there for a couple of years. Um, but I found within that a sweetness and God always providing support just when it got difficult. And then in, through time, and I think this is something, if I had the chance to give advice to myself, looking back, and also to someone in that situation, was to take things easy, to try and embody things through their character and the core of Islam, and not feel that they always need to get their point across. Because I did feel very strongly that I really wanted to convey what it was that I knew, without realizing that sometimes your actions and your state speaks louder than your words. And so there was that kind of initial tussle. But I think as my family got to know me better and my immediate family, and you know, time itself has a healing, is that um, now, I mean, it's my, my, my immediate family really, really, you know, there's a real closeness. And when I go there, when I visit my parents, you know, it's like, you know, you know, everything is a norm. It's a norm for me to pray there. It's my identities. You know, my mother, you know, refers to me as my Muslim name. I go on Friday, Friday prayers and, you know, um, but there is an element of respect, and my and my dad is always really keen on, uh, you know, uh, Islamic speakers, <laughs> and you know, and what, and he, so there is an element of that, and I think a lot of that is is kind of uh, just through trying to, just also a reassurance, which is a very human level. You are their son, you are, you know, you are the person that they've known, and to some, to the degree that in your at your core you're still who you were. And you're just trying to be more genuine in that and you know what Islam's calling us to. So that's there, yeah. But there are there are challenges, there are social challenges, and I think the biggest thing is that each of us will probably be challenged in some way to live up. That's part of life. And but there is always support of God in those challenges. So. Mm. Islam, I wouldn't say change me, but is continually calling me to change and is changing me. Because Islam is truth. And I think looking back at the age of 16 when I did decide to become Muslim was that the first thing was it was just liberating to know that there is a truth out there, that there is a point to life. It was so liberating and, and I think most of the converts I've spoken to always say that those first few months are just exhilarating because it's sort of like, oh, how come no one else knows about this? You know, this is, this is it's like a treasure. Right? But then, you know, as time goes on, it's like the challenge to live up to the, our lives and that greatest truth. And, and this is the part of faith, right? Being called to what is your greatest truth? What do you really ascribe to? But just having that, that, you know, like that guidance, just knowing that there is guidance, just knowing that there is a point, knowing was, was really, really, really peaceful. And uh, I remember just it was, so, it was so overpowering and it was so comforting that somewhat in my naivety, as a 16-year-old, it was like, you know, well, it should be easy. I just tell everyone and they'll, they'll see it exactly the way I do, especially the family. Um, and it wasn't the case because, you know, a lot of these things are not in our own hands. And I asked you to ask yourself, what's the deepest form of acceptance? The deepest form of acceptance is the acceptance of the truth you know from your core. 
And that's what embracing Islam is. It's about being true to the core of what's asking for us to be accepted. Once you accept that, you'll find God comes in your life and makes things easier and everything you thought that was impossible or otherwise something to be worried about will become possible and you'll find a way out. That's my hope. Thanks.